Okay, welcome to the second uh, video in, in uh, chapter four, uh, imperfections or defects in crystalline solids. So we did the point defects last time, and now we're going to uh, move up in energy level. So the point defects um, don't require a whole lot of energy to form because we're only looking at um, a single atom um, kind of defect or maybe a distortion, a few atoms a distance from that. Uh, but now we're going to look at line defects where we've got a whole row of atoms uh, that are involved. And then next time, interfacial, where we've got a whole surface of atoms involved. Okay, So the energy level of these keeps going up. And remember, in terms of structures, lower energy is always what we want. Lower energy is the more stable configuration. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about dislocations. Dislocations are... Uh, extremely important and we're going to take advantage of controlling the numbers of dislocations in a solid to improve mechanical behavior. So it'll turn out that strengthening of uh, many uh, metals and alloys can be done through increasing the number of dislocations in the original structure. So these defects actually result in a strengthening okay, up to some point and then they create a brittle solid, um, which is then detrimental. So we'll talk about that more in the uh, chapters to come. So for now, let's just see what a line dislocation looks like. So I've got a, a TEM micrograph here on the left side. And this is at atomic resolution, essentially, or just, just before atomic resolution. And what we're seeing here, these lines, these are actually dislocation lines. Okay. So the way this instrument works, um, these bright regions are where the X-ray beam, uh, the electron, sorry, the electron beam is able to penetrate through the sample relatively easily and it results um, in a bright area, the detector is sitting behind the sample. And then the dark lines are where the lattice is distorted, so this electron beam has trouble moving through, and so it shows up dark. And the dislocations are, are lines of distortion in the lattice. And so we can see them here. And so they do show up as lines. This is why they're referred to as line defects. And you can see there's a lot of them uh, in this TEM micrograph. Remember, this is now 51,000 X in the original micrograph that was taken. So I want to talk about some theories about deformation. So dislocations are going to be important when you're thinking about uh, plastic or permanent deformation. That is when you take something and you bend it into a new shape, you've plastically deformed, you've permanently deformed it. Okay, this is different from elastic deformation which is when you stretch something and if you let go of the force, it returns to its original shape like a spring. So in order for there to be permanent deformation in our crystal structure, you can imagine what has to happen is we need to uh, move one part of the crystal relative to another part of the crystal. We're showing this here at, a, at an atomic scale. This has to happen all throughout our solid. But we need to move atoms from um, one set of sites. It was over here originally, right? Over to another set of sites. If I, if I only move them part way, so maybe here, and I let go of the force, this would end up just returning back to where it started from. That would be, some, that would be elastic. But if I can remove them, move them all the way over so that it is forming the same crystal structure again, it's coming back into the correct sites, then this is permanent, there's no reason to go back. So I need to slide these uh, planes of crystals along each other. Now, if this was the mechanism uh, where I have one set of planes that just slides all together over the other set of planes, it turns out that this would take uh, much, much higher uh, strengths much, much higher stress values than what we see experimentally. In fact, this crystal, if we did it this way, when it's at a, 
this site here, when it's maximum displacement, it's very close to the theoretical strength of the material, and we would most likely end up with fracture. So there's another way that, that this needs to happen that was first speculated is instead of trying to move the entire crystal here over top of the bottom one at one time, what if we were to just kind of move a piece? Okay, so what we did is we kind of pushed in a set of planes okay, and we've distorted this region right in here. It looks like we've got an extra set of planes in our structure, but if I look up here, the lattice looks fine. It's really right in here where I've got the problem. Right? So I've got too many atoms in this little region. So th this is the distortion that that DEM micrograph sees. And now remember, this is coming in and out of the board, so it forms a line. But now all I got to do is move this over one by one, and we move the whole crystal. Okay, so this is a much easier process, takes much less stress. This would be similar to um, you moving, say, a 100-foot hose across your backyard. Instead of pulling the hose all at one shot, like in this picture, you would go ahead and, and uh, put a kink in it, right? Kind of whip the hose, put a kink in it, and let that kink move down the whole length of the hose, and then you've managed to move the hose over by whatever that kink size was. So that's kind of the idea. This was first shown uh, and on these very simple experiments, these bubble raft experiments. So what I have here are tiny little bubbles, and they're floating on water. And what we're going to see, and they're packed real well, and right? this looks like a hexagonal kind of packing that you'd see on that one, one, one plane in face-centered cubic again. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to start squeezing the bubbles together, and if you do that, then you're going to want to displace them. You don't want to have deformation. So what we're looking to see is, do we see entire rows of atoms just suddenly moving across one another to a new position? Or do we see something that looks more like a dislocation where we get a distortion locally somewhere, and then that distortion moves along as it moves uh, part of the crystal until it's complete? So again, these are just bubbles, but it's a very nice experiment. What do we get? There they are. See these lines that come running, zipping across, there it goes. Those are the dislocations. As they zip across the structure, we're displacing, there it is, we're displacing one row of bubbles relative to the other. So actually this entire crystal over here, if you want to think of it that way, of bubbles is displaced relative to the bubbles below that line. There goes another one um, shooting across here. Okay, so these are the idea of a dislocation. A TEM micrograph again, and I showed this before to you. We saw dislocation lines in this TEM uh, type micrograph, but now we've got a sample that's being deformed plastically in the TEM, and what you'll get to see now is the motion of real dislocations. So there they are, all just zooming along in this direction, Again, as they move along, they're displacing this crystal one atomic plane at a time. And so this bending that you see in a macro scale is actually done by the displacement of large number, huge numbers of dislocations. Okay. Your textbook will talk about the, uh, the numbers of dislocations that uh, you'll have in a solid, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a chapter to come. But huge numbers of dislocations that are moving the material at an atomic scale, and that results in the overall deformation you see at a macro scale. So you can start imagining that if I make it somehow difficult for these dislocations to move, then I'm gonna end up making it more difficult for plastic deformation to happen and that indeed is what uh, strengthening is all about. So that would be chapter seven. All right, structure-wise, just wanna make sure that you've got these two types um, 
kind of in your head. There's the edge dislocation. This is the one that I sort of talked about before, where it looks like there's an extra plane of, of atoms here in the structure. But again, if you look out here, things look good, you know, square. Look down here, they're looking square. It's right when I'm in here that I see that there's a distortion. I mean, there's a little distortion up here. So this is really where the dislocation is. This is the line that's coming in and out of the board. So this is referred to as an edge dislocation when you see this kind of geometry. And then as you strain the material, this dislocation will move in this direction. And it moves by um, one atomic jump or what's called the Burgers vector. It just describes the magnitude um, each time the dislocation moves of displacement. The edge dislocation is characterized by the fact that the Burgers vector points perpendicular right, to the edge dislocation, which again is coming in and out of the board. So that's our edge dislocation. Eventually, when it gets over to the side, this will break and I'll end up with this sticking out. The other type of dislocation we can have, which is called a screw dislocation. Um, and in this dislocation, the displacement of the solid, shown here, the Burgers vector, so the solid is going to, the top half of the solid is getting displaced that way relative to this bottom half. But the dislocation line itself is here running along the inside of this solid. So my displacement here is now parallel to my dislocation line. Um, that's different again than the edge, which was perpendicular. It's really not that important. I'm not going to be quizzing you on that, that bit of this, but there's an edge and then there's a screw dislocation. And the one the way to see this screw dislocation is if you were to start off at some point here, well, first, let me just start off, uh, let's say over here. If I was to start off here and I count across uh, maybe four or five units, one, what I do? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then back up again, I end up right where I started from. If I have a dislocation in my solid, when I do this, I'm going to be displaced from my original location. This works for the edge dislocation as well as the screw. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say I start here and I go, uh, let me just do my loop. So I'm gonna go down two, let's go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I gotta come back down two. So that this is the displacement total of four. Okay, so I form my loop, but notice now that I'm one level inside the material. Okay, I've been, I have a displacement here that represents the Burgers vector. So if I do that again, then I'll just keep coming in and spiraling through the material. So that's my, my screw dislocation. All right, so that's the end of the uh, dislocation discussions. Like I said, we'll get into the importance of them uh, much more when we get to chapter seven.